Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'll be reviewing my third round game from the second Cleveland Go Club rating tournament that was held on October 29th. If you didn't see the last video, I ended up winning my second round game and thus my record was 2-0 at this point. Um, so after playing the second round, there was no breaks and then we jumped straight into the third round. My third round opponent is Jerry Jaffe, my dad, and we rarely play in tournaments. Uh, the last time we played was actually the Ohio State Go Championship. That was, at this point, I guess a couple years ago. Uh, but besides that, I don't think we've played. Um, now, obviously, the Ohio Championship was an even game, um, so I was probably... A little favored for that one, but this one, handicap, could be anyone's game. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Approach, again, just like just like the um, first two games, I start with the same two moves. Uh, in this game, it's only a four stone handicap, so technically a little different, but that also means it's very similar. And so we can see, once again, a kind of difference in people's preferences. First round game, my opponent answered the first approach by playing low, and then answered the second approach by pincering the right side. In the third round, in the second round game, I mean, my opponent played two low knight's moves in response to both. And in this game, black chose two one space jumps. So it's again, it's just interesting to see what players are going to choose. Um, and again, I think it's mainly based on style a lot of the times. So, yeah. Um, in the other games, I continued on the right side, but in this game, just jumped into the 3-3. Three, three. Um, no real rhyme or reason, but yeah. Let's jump in. Get this variation. So, of course, black... Kicks, and then pincers. And this pincers is maybe not strange, but a little uncommon. Um, yeah, um, I am curious how Black ended up with this pincer. Because I would think to play a little further. Uh, kind of saying, okay, White, which group are you going to help? And if Black did do something like this, I was... Probably going to switch to the corners, maybe here, or continue like I do in the game with the peep here. But here you're so close to these two white stones. Now these two white stones are still outnumbered, and they still don't have any allies nearby. But if white ends up getting some thickness or some strength, let's say I were to lean something like this, you can see black's going to end up very close to my wall there. So I'm not sure black wants to be that close. Now, even when black pincers here, I could still just play into the 3-3 if I wanted to. And if black descends, then I can play some move, maybe like this, take out the corner. And this would be a nice way to avoid any sort of fighting with these two stones. So I, I peep first and play here and black answers. Uh, usually you don't want to answer this because it's considered, if, if you think of this variation, like this, let me say black goes elsewhere. If white peeps now, black would like to be able to stand up or push or play a move like this. When black connects, black gets very over concentrated. All of black stones are one after the other, whereas white stones are very efficient. So if you go to the game, when white peeps first, that usually means after this, black should go elsewhere. And I think black should. I think black can maybe continue somewhere on the right side. With this kind of move, or even putting more pressure on the upper right. So it's a little slow to answer here. It also forces me to not only extend, but also help my two stones here. So black descends to keep me from connecting. And then I play uh, this diagonal. And 
this diagonal is doing two things. One, it is threatening to start a connection. In the game, black descends, which allows me to clamp. And you can see if black descends, I can connect this way. And if black connects, I can connect this way. So it's it's doing that for me. But it's also doing, if black plays something else, is haunting. And now there's a lot of bad Aji in the corner. I don't have time to do anything with it now. But if black has to deal with these three stones now, Later, again, we'll play some basic moves, something like this. Later, there's Aji of peeping, of clamping. Yeah, probably the peep, though. A lot of bad Aji there. So, yeah, I felt okay getting this move. And I think it is smart for black to descend here. Another move black could play, like if you do this one, white can just turn and then jump and you're heavy. Black can prevent white's clamp by playing this kind of move. Um, and this is more forceful, of course, towards the upper right. So even if I get this move, black can continue somehow because continue better somehow. Again, not sure. The best continuation, probably the clamp. Expect something like this to happen. Uh, because it's more forceful, because you're touching the stone, compared to if you just connect. So I think black does have time to go here. And even after this, if white answers, it's a little awkward. Because no matter which way you go, black gets a Hane here, which here, again later, leaves some bad peeping Aji. And of course the other way, maybe there's not peeping Aji anymore, but black shape is very good towards the center. So... Yeah, maybe I needed to find another move. Or just give up the two now and just go elsewhere. Because even after this, what I didn't realize was black can actually go here. And if I connect, then black can cut me off. Uh, and you might say, well, if you Atari, black has to connect and then I can connect. So what's the difference? Well, actually, black can cut here. Take an Atari. Um, and obviously in this case, might be a little too early for black. But that means at some point black can cut off these two stones. So yeah, that was just something I missed completely in the game. This whole time I'm thinking, yeah, I'm totally connected. And if this is totally connected, I feel okay as white. Because black has given me a pretty solid right side in the process. So yeah, I'd be okay with this. But... There's a lot of bad Aji still, so black bumps and then plays here. So I descend, looking to isolate these stones if black gives me the chance. So black plays up here. This move, yeah, not super great. Um, yeah, locally, like if you want to play something locally, you should think to play like this clamp or maybe this move. Uh, this feels a little too slow. Feels a little too slow. Yeah. And... Yeah, it's just too slow. Uh, you obviously... You could add a move down on the bottom. It might feel slow, but it is starting to map out the entire bottom. Uh, or of course just play on the upper left somewhere. But I don't like this move black played in the game. Because it just meant I could go elsewhere. Which I do, I play in the lower side. And I, I picked this spot specifically because I'm still looking at potential Aji at maybe N3, N2. There's a lot of nasty moves here Black needs to worry about. So that's why I think Black fixed on this side. I think Black can go here though. Because of course this is threatening to connect underneath. Which is kind of a backdoor connection if Black needs it. Even if I jump and Black goes here... Like, I would be happy with this as white. I would just go elsewhere. Because uh, I've reduced black on the bottom. If I really want to be super aggressive, I could... Let's see, maybe attach. Pr trying to prevent that connection. If we do something like this. Now I've prevented that connection. 
Uh, but now I'm a little heavier. Now I have to save these stones, whereas these stones are light, if this is what would happen. Uh, in some cases, I can also switch directly to playing at N3 or N2. Uh, but I think black needs to pincer here. When black goes here, first off, this is one of the shapes you want to avoid at all, almost all costs. Um, I like to think of it as you have a one space jump with two, or with both colors, I mean. Getting this diagonal for either side is not that great. Now, in this case, it's probably okay, but in a lot of cases, the reason why it's not a great move to make is because your opponent, in this case white, gets more liberties and you still have shape problems in your shape. Uh, conversely, if you switch the order, it's the opposite. Now black's stones have more liberties and white's shapes, white's shape is not perfect. So that's why in a lot of cases you want to think about attaching so that notice when you pull back, you're still gonna get that diagonal but now, white shape is not as strong. Uh, in this case, so obviously, you don't want to attach because it makes white stronger and thus make your corner weaker. So that's why I think black shouldn't even worry about that kind of thing and just pincer. When black goes here, yeah, I need to play this one. This is the shape point of the four stones here, and this would, this would help a lot compared to what happens in the game. Yeah, this is... This will be tricky for black. Um, even if black can cap, I stand up. Black has a lot of problems, and I can connect any time at E2. And that's the power of C2. I'm creating that backdoor connection. We see a similar move in my second round game in the upper left, where black was starting to build a moyo. Instead of jumping right in, I play a move that makes my corner bigger, but also will help if I choose to jump in. I choose this in the game, yeah, it's, this move is just obviously where's black going to play? Well, black's going to take the shape point. And then here, where's black going to play? Right? And even though I make good shape technically, um, it's quite slow. It's quite slow. Black was able to secure the bottom right and this side um, while I had to connect. So black jumps here, so I jump here. Black jumps and I jump. And then black descends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so black is pretty solid here now. Um, I felt okay, though, because I did reduce black's um, influence on the bottom. And there's still some Aji uh, on the bottom, in the bottom right. But nothing quite works. Uh, I was looking at this move in the game. Uh, saying, okay, I can connect at L2, I can peep here. Um, but I think black's move here protects everything. Yeah, I think black's move here. Because even if I peep, black can descend here. So I didn't see anything else that quite worked. So I just left it for now. Played up top. Now this spacing might look weird. Like you would think, well, why don't you just play the spot that um, gives you an extension? On both sides or I should say a two space extension on both sides that's something that um, we're taught as we're getting better uh, the reason why in this case I didn't want to is you play that way to leave the, the two space extension on either side if it's me I and me I means two points of interchangeable equal value we're saying okay if I get one my opponent takes the other and vice versa. Um, in this case, I felt like they weren't even though. I felt black was going to play here and push me towards their thickness. And let's see if black plays this kind of move. Now black's knight's move here is actually in a very nice spot. It's looking to attack the top very nicely. So I wanted to avoid this thickness. So I was just playing closer to black's um, corner to avoid the upper right. So that was my thinking. And even if black pincers and gets a further extension on this side, 
Well, I can place a move to settle the upper side stone, and now I'm not getting close to black's thickness. So that was my thinking. And the game, black still decides to play here from the corner, but when I extend up top, now I'm not as close to black's thickness. And in fact, black plays the same move as in the other variation, but we can see when my stone's a little further away, I'm a little stronger. This is putting less pressure on my stone. And here, if I just play some move like this, it's a completely different game, and I think I would be happy with this game. I'm just settling my groups. There's still Aji in the upper left. It would go to end game. In the game, I jump straight into the corner. Black prevents that, or prevents my connection. If black plays here, then I would happily connect. Not only is this taking out black's corner, but I'm also settling the top. So that'd be very nice. So black separates me. I can play the 3-3 though. And we get this variation. Now I think black had a few better moves. Like for one, black can play here to prevent um, the connection. This would strengthen me up top. And it would mean, even though the stone's getting surrounded, I would get some Aji from it with this kind of knight's move next. Um, if I ignore, though, the idea is all this is still Sente because I need to live in the corner. Black's follow-up up top is more severe compared to the diagonal. And again, it's because we're touching white stone. Um, Black could also think to bump here. This is kind of forcing me to stand up. Black pulls back. Something like this. The idea is there is weaknesses in Black's shape. But White can't really use them if White's weak up top. So for example, like on Black's next turn, Black can go here. And you might say, well, there's weaknesses here. But I can keep White sealed in. Because again, this stone at E18 is not valuable anymore. In fact, it would help me surround white. So that's why like, I can descend here because I don't think white would play here because this hurts white up top. Like this. So there's weaknesses, but they're kind of fake weaknesses because it would hurt white more to take them than it would be to leave them. So I think black could have kicked here. So I so basically there was a lot of choices black could have made. This is probably the worst one, letting white connect. But if you're gonna keep white separated, this might be the the second worst. Then, um, yeah, it's just a little inefficient. Kick, play like this, Atari. If black fixes here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this also feels a little slow. Um, yeah, because black does have the ladder here, so this cut doesn't mean anything. So I think black should just continue uh, up top with this kind of move. Even if white can peep here, you just connect. Just connect. It just feels a little slow. And so then, this move. So, in the game, I immediately push and cut. Um, I can explain myself. Give me a second. So... Right now I'm alive in the corner, uh, so I could have just jumped, but what I didn't want to see is this move in Sente, because once black gets this move in Sente, black is perfectly connected. Black is perfectly connected. Even if I think, oh, um, I can play like this kind of move to disconnect black, well, it's a net. So after black gets E18, there's no problems in black shape. And I could go anywhere. I could do anything. And black could play E18 and Sente. So I wanted to make sure I keep black separated. So that's why I immediately push and cut. Um, but we can see this doesn't actually prevent E18. And black actually takes that now. And even though I cut, black has to connect. I can attach once. And then Atari. There's a huge fight in the center going on, and I have to spend a move to live in the corner. So, 
Yeah, I think instead I should just take e18, make my corner bigger, and if black fixes somehow, because there's still a cut here, again, I'm not sure um, the best way, maybe this kind of move, then we just move on. It's, it's a different game. I took the corner out, so I should be happy with that. Um, so yeah, once I, basically once this push and cut happens, the rest of the game becomes a bloodbath. Because if you look at the board here, we have black group, white group, black group, white group, white group. Three white groups, two black groups. Technically white here is just floating. Black is 100% alive in the lower left. So it's going to get crazy from this point. Um, so I attach here. Need to get that exchange in. And then Atari here. Black should just leave this. Um, and just play the game black. Play the move black played in the game. This one. Because if white takes, it's Gote. Um, and at any point, black can connect in Sente. Because it threatens to play C19. So there's no need to um, fill here. In fact, if white took here now, I would be happy as black. I would be ecstatic. So you can just leave this. It's the, it's like the perfect co-threat. It doesn't help you much locally, and you can play it at any point. It's Gote for your opponent to take, and it's Sente for you to take. That's the perfect co-threat. So white has to fill. Black comes out. Turn. And then jump. And so already, this fight is feeling not so good for me because... Remember way back here, I was saying how, yeah, there's three weak black groups. Well, from how I played, I forced black to connect two of those weak groups. And therefore, black only has one weak group now. Whereas if you look at the white groups, okay, I've settled my upper left. But the top is weak. These stones are weak. And these stones are weak. So, yeah, it's going to be tricky. I think I should... Hmm, what should what should I do here? Maybe I need to give up the top. There's no real point value for, in the top. And if black allows me to come back and attack from here. Because again, black needs to worry about this bottom side group as well. As well as the upper left group now. So, yes. This felt not great, though, because this was one of Black's weak groups as well. Uh, this F17 group, and I'm kind of letting Black um, save it now. So I went there, and then jump. So Black goes here. I think this is a nice idea. I think this is mistimed. I should ignore this. I should play a move like this. Again, this is what's big right now. Because, again, once Black has connected... All this move is threatening to do is cut off these stones here. And it doesn't change the life and death of Black's groups. But if I can capture this, this changes the life and death of the top group, of this left side group. Um, and even if Black can live, if I can seal Black in, that would obviously be a big deal. And so I think I can play some move like this, or maybe the shoulder hit. Again, these kind of fights are so difficult because there's a lot of variations. But yeah, something like this should be possible. Um, and this, again, would change the complexion of the game a lot. Did I attach? So black jumps? Yeah. I needed to just do that first. So I jump again. Because again, now, oh, I have to help this group. Black place here. It's a strange move. I guess they didn't like uh, me getting this peep. But this would actually hurt my left side so I don't know if I would do that peep this feels a little slow I have to f I guess I have to fix anyway so maybe it's okay but it felt a little strange black fixes because there is this knight's move here and then I play here yeah this move I have the right idea I have weaknesses here but I needed to play a little faster with this kind of move yeah this would be a lot better it would change again it would change a lot because this move by itself is threatening to seal in at K, uh, what is that, K11. But it's also helping me surround the stone here. This move's just a little too slow. It looked like a nice shape point to get, but 
yeah, that's kind of all it is. Because black Hanes now. I pull back. And then black knights moves. And this is a very awkward shape for me. Because it's, here are the two moves I would want to play. I want to play here. But of course, double peep. Too dangerous. Or I want to play here. But, similarly, this is too dangerous. If black gets too strong here, something like this, then there's no attack now. Black would just come back and connect here. And notice, even though I'm connecting my stones here, they're just floating in the center. They're not going to be making me any points. So, yeah, that'd be dangerous. Um, and as I was saying before, I didn't want to make this shape here. Right, you have the uh, both color, one space jump. You don't want to make this exchange. You want to try not to, I should say. So I didn't like doing this, but I bumped here. Black pulls back and then jumped. Yeah, so it didn't feel great because again, I'm strengthening black in the center, but my string of stones here is very weak. So black connects. And then I, get, I try to be forceful because now I'm like, okay, this fight is getting out of hand. Black and diagonal though. And I jump back. And then black pushes and cuts. So I peep and push and cut back. Like so. Um, yeah. And I would like to be able to maybe bump here. Force black to connect and then cut. Or not even cut, go here. But I'm just I'm just too too weak. Black can connect and then push. And black has enough liberties here to capture these stones. So it doesn't quite work. Doesn't quite work. So I cut directly black Ataris. And then cuts here. Push. Black fixes, I push again, and then stand up. And then, so black takes away liberty, that was necessary, because now these are cut off. And so I have cut off these stones, but this is this is the tricky part, because I need to kill this now to win. I have given up these four stones at the bottom. That's black taking the whole bottom, that is huge. And... The problem with this is I'm not alive here on the left side. These stones are cut off. And these stones are not alive either. So I have three weak groups. And black can make eyes at by like clamping at J17. So this is very tricky. So I, I lean here trying to help my connection here. I, this it shouldn't be Sente. I think black can just do something else. Because the most I can get is maybe push and what cut. But even after the cut, you can just Atari. So it's not even that big of end game there. But black answers. So I was like, okay, that's probably good enough. I need to do something in the center. So I peep here. Um, this is me trying to take Sente because I knew my connection here wasn't perfect. So I wanted to get this extra move here. But this just helps black connect because black and Hane. And then even though I can cut... Yeah, now black's connecting back to these two stones. So I think I needed to just kind of be patient and maybe play like this kind of move. Because uh, this is helping with connections because it's setting up an Atari and this Hane. But it's just so, so ugly for white. Um, yeah, maybe... Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, there. Mm-hmm. So after this, again, you can just see all the contingencies that need to make this work for white. Even now, the top side is cut off completely. So I turn. Uh, trying to save these in Sente because this is threatening to cut. But black bumps. Saying, okay, you can capture the two, but then I'll capture you on the right side here. Yeah, not good. So I have to play here. I At least I felt that way. So, black plays here. I push here. This move doesn't even help. Uh, black can double peep because this is threatening to, pe to peep. And if I have to connect, then black can play like this kind of move. 
cut those off. So black's already basically alive in the center. But the problem is now I'm not alive up top. And yeah, I play I played out. But there's really at this point nothing much else uh, white can do here. Black cuts um, like this. There's, there is still something to point out though. Uh, we have this co up top. It is important to mention black was generous here. Black could just uh, peep here. Because even if white cuts here to capture, uh, black can cut off the center, which is much bigger. The black Atari is giving you this co shape. I don't have co threats because I'm dead everywhere and uh, black is alive everywhere. And again, it's a, it's a flower co as well. Meaning, like, if I lose this co, I lose the whole group. But if black loses the co, black just loses a few points. Uh, is, is here. So this is this is a co-threat, but there's technically a better co-threat for a couple reasons. So if you play this one, you only get one more co-threat of here, right? That's it. But if you play this one, this gives you more co-threats. Because you have this one, one, two... And then three. So that's three co-threats. But even better is once you play at B19, F19 becomes Sente because you're threatening to play A18. And why F why is F19 nice? Because it threatens to make an eye. And again, at this stage, there's many ways for Black to, to make two eyes. But that is something to point out that if you can make an eye at G19, then Black's completely alive. Uh, but the main thing is you get more co-threats this way. But I, I thought it was important to mention that um, you can make this co or make two eyes. So, yeah. Um, minor mistake for black there. Not that it will change much. Play here. So I'm trying to make two eyes um, up there. It's not really uh, working too well. Uh, like black can just take... This is Sente. I have to go here and then Black can continue what Black does because then Black changes their attention back to the center stones. I play here, threatening this Ko. Again, though, I'm not alive up top. Uh, or I'm, a, I'm alive up top through Ko, so I can't start another Ko because then there'd be two Ko's and that's un unwinnable. Uh, even looking at it now, might not even be I guess it is technically co still because I can play here but yeah I try to survive I found this nice sequence which again I don't even think would work like again this move is not sente um, I can connect here descend I was like oh I can cut these off but yeah I do not have enough liberties this is sente and yeah, Atari, Atari, Atari. Something like this. So I would die there. So nothing works. So at this point, I resigned when Black played 06. Um, and this this game felt weird because in a lot of cases when I'm playing Handicap, um, if I lose the, a Handicap game, uh, it was, for me, maybe playing too slowly. It's very rare that... I lose a handicap game because I was being outfought. But in this case, that's just straight up what happened. I was I was outfought in a lot of scenarios. Um, I think the opening was okay for me. But uh, let's see. Like here, missing, missing this G4. So black punished me immediately. Um, and then this was okay here. But, again, like this scenario here, um, yeah, black just outfought. Especially, all of this was still okay for white, but everything here, black did better. Like, this isn't good. Um, answering here isn't good. Uh, potentially, going here is not good. I should play something at maybe C10. So, just in a lot of cases... Black was the one just making the better moves in the fight. Which again, in a handicap game, I would not expect, but it's it's true. Black Hanes, Black Caps. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Black just played very strongly 
in the fighting. So, yeah, I gotta commend, gotta commend my dad for that. He, uh, he beat me up good. And I also gotta, I gotta take back, um, what I said about the N14 move. At the time when he played it, I was like, yeah, that's not a good move, I don't think. But this move was the bane of my top group for the rest of the game. So, it turned out to be perfectly placed. Um, but yeah, this was, this was, um, not a good game by me. Um, partially, I, I do want to mention something. I def, I thoroughly got outread, and I'm not taking anything away from, um, my dad. But just for next time for me, I need to play and s slow down. Every tournament, it feels like I tell myself, I need to slow down. And at the Go Congress, I did that, but that felt kind of different, uh, if that makes sense. More prestigious, more on the line. Um, so it was easier to slow down. Um, but in this game, and in every single one of my games, I never went into Bioyomi. In every single one of my games. Now again, that can work out as we see in the first two games. But if it doesn't work out, it can crumble like this. So in all four of my games, I never went under maybe 10 minutes of main time. Like it was, it was bad. So I just need to remember to, even at these local tournaments, to just slow down. Just slow down. Um, and use my time wisely. So again, pop, props to my dad for beating me thoroughly. Um, and I got one more game after this, so I couldn't... I sulked for a little bit. Uh, I just got to get... You know, the feelings and, oh, I should have went here instead. Or, you know, all those different thoughts out of my head before the fourth round game. But, uh, again, no real break. Uh, although, I guess I played so quickly that I got a break. Because I had to wait for the other rounds to finish. But there was no official break. Um, maybe I got like 45 minutes or so. So, it was enough time for me to kind of detach myself from this game and forget about it. Um, so, I could go into the fourth round game with... Um, with a clear mind and clear uh, headspace. So, yeah. Good game by Black in this. This, well, this game was not my best performance. I think even at the end of the game, I counted. I had like seven groups, six -ish groups, th three of which were dead or dying. So, not great. Not great. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions about this game, or even in this game, if you have any advice for things I could have done better, I am all... I'm all ears because I am I am curious if I could have done uh, anything better or if Black just outplayed me. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions about the game, please let me know in the comments. I make sure to try to read all the comments that are made. Um, and yeah, I'll see everybody in the next video.